Welcome to Cosmos Safari. I'm your host, Dave Farina. Have you ever wondered how to find M1, the Crab Nebula? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing winter sky wonder in your telescope. M1, the Crab Nebula, also known as NGC 1952, is a supernova remnant located in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. At a distance of 6,000, 523 light years, the Crab Nebula was first observed by ancient Chinese astronomers in the year 1054 AD. The supernova was visible in the daytime sky for over 23 days and was four times brighter than Venus at its maximum. The brightness and relative proximity of M1 makes it one of the most easily accessible supernova remnants in the entire sky. Over the last Nearly 1,000 years since this event, the expanding gas cloud has increased in size to over 5.5 light years, giving the Crab Nebula an apparent angular size of nearly six arc minutes in our nighttime sky. That's about one-fifth the size of the full moon. At a magnitude of 8.40, M1 is bright enough to be observed with a pair of 50 millimeter binoculars or a small telescope. However, a larger telescope diameter will provide the best results by increasing the light gathering power. M1 is visible even under light polluted skies. However, dark sky sites provide significantly better views of the surrounding nebulosity due to the high contrast between the dark sky and the brightness of the object. Step one, find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the Northeast US, we will start our observation by locating the constellation of Orion as it rises in the southeastern sky just after midnight by mid-October and as early as 6 p.m. by the months of January and February. Orion is easily located as it is one of the sky's brightest constellations and is home to a number of deep sky objects. Step two, find the object using star hopping. Within Orion, find the bright 0.43 magnitude red supergiant star Betelgeuse. Next, locate the bright 0.06 magnitude G-class star Alpha Aurigae, also known as Capella, in the constellation of Auriga, the charioteer. Draw an imaginary line between Betelgeuse and Capella. About halfway between these stars, you will locate the bright 1.62 magnitude B-class star Beta Tauri also known as Alnath, in the constellation of Taurus the Bull. Next, draw another imaginary line between Betelgeuse and Alnath. About two-thirds of the way between Betelgeuse and Alnath, you will locate Zeta Tauri, a 2.96 magnitude B-class star in the constellation of Taurus. Using a Telrad, or red dot finder scope, move over one degree towards the northwest. That's like going up and to the right. On a Telrad, this will be equivalent to the distance to the second from the middle ring from Zeta Tori, or about the width of your pinky finger, as seen at arm's length. Step 3. Move your eye to your magnified finder. At this point, you should have M1, the Crab Nebula, in your magnified finder scope. In light polluted skies, M1 should be visible in a 50 millimeter or larger finder scope, but it may be faint. Center M1 in your finder scope. Step four, move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. I always start my observations with my widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen the very wide Nagler 26 on my eight inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Center your object in the field of view and slowly work your way down to the smaller and smaller focal length eyepieces centering each one until you get the desired field of view for your setup. Although M1 is excellent through a long focal length reflecting telescope, it is still visible through binoculars or a small refractor. Unfortunately, it may be difficult to achieve the desired field of view due to the short focal lengths of this type of equipment. Consider the use of a Barlow lens to multiply the effective focal length of your equipment by two, three, and even four times. A warning, the trade-off when using low quality Barlow lenses is usually a decrease in the brightness and the image quality of your observations. 
In order to achieve the highest quality results, I recommend spending some extra money on a more premium Barlow lens to avoid these negative effects. I'll link to a few of my best examples in the descriptions below. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos, which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribe to the channel. And click the notification bell if you want to find out each time I have uploaded a new video. If you have a different method for finding M1, want to provide me with feedback on this video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, or astrophotography, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much from Dave Farina here at Cosmos Safari. Clear skies.